come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, movie review podcast. We do it every week for your listening pleasure. We hope that you'll do us a favor, and if you like what you hear, Go on over to wherever you found us. Give us a like, a star rating, or a review, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. Indeed. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. We're down one tonight. Oh, the, yeah. the, the sickness has claimed <laughs> one of our down, own. Down with the sickness. <laughs> Not the coronavirus. No. Well, I mean, do we, we know don't that think for sure? So. We don't think we so. We don't know. It's pretty dark. We don't know. We don't know. We have no idea. Um, I don't know. I think it's the well, flu. It's, it's even worse. It's the flu. She's been to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, so, doctors aren't always right. You true. <laughs> true. And not one of the confirmed cases. So, we're, <laughs> yeah, the outbreak. We should have watched an outbreak movie tonight to celebrate. But instead, we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin. Uh, what do we watch tonight? Tonight, we watched a movie called Deep Red, a.k.a. Profondo Rosso. Profondo Rosso. Profondo you have Rosso. to mm-hmm. also say it like that. There's certain... Yeah, profondo, there's, profondo Rosso. for our listeners, there are hand gestures happening yes. right now. Yeah. <laughs> profondo Rosso. Yeah. Profondo. Yes. Very pro- pro- profondo Rosso. Uh, Margarete. This, <laughs> from, that's, uh, that's every time Margarete. Anything in Italian, <laughs> anything. that's going to happen. It always happens. Uh, directed is, by who? Well, from the year 1975 oh, yes. and directed mm. by... Dario Argento. Who is Dario Argento? He's uh, king of giallo. What is a giallo? Giallo is an Italian slasher movie. What is the difference between... We talked about this before. The Italian and the American slasher? Yeah. Because I guess this is part of my field of study. It is. It is It is one of your... Uh, hang your, Yeah, it really it is. Yeah, you have a keen <laughs> interest in the giallo. Well, I have and a keen its interest in and, the American slasher film. Sure. Because when I was growing up, Slasher films was what horror was doing. Yes. And so because of that, I have developed a fixation. Right. But then you find out that 10 years prior, the Italians were doing this thing called giallo. Mm-hmm. Giallo is the Italian word for. Oh, do you expect me to know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just oh. checking. Gelatin? I don't know, Colin. Giallo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. So that makes sense. It, so that it's makes like sense. giallo. Giallo. Yeah, it's giallo, giallo, yellow, yeah, giallo. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, keep saying it. It'll click at some point. <laughs> uh, the reason that it has this title, yeah, or why, why they it? are called giallo, yellow is cinema. because uh, way back in the 30s or something, there was a Italian publisher called Mon- Mondadori, I think, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which basically imprinted, uh, or, uh, imported and printed a bunch of stories from... Uh, Authors such as Agatha Christie. Did he print them on yellow paper? Ed, Edgar Wallace. They were they had yellow covers. They had yellow mm, covers. Right. Yeah. And I so, did know that, that. Yeah. The Italians just called them giallo thrillers. Yes. Yeah. You know. And so I like that history. In the seventies, uh, when they started making these films, which were kind of crime mystery, murder mystery things, mm-hmm. the Italian public just said, "Well, those are giallo films." It's giallo. Ah, it's just like the book. Yeah, it's like the the giallo, the giallo. Oh God, we're gonna Come go on, Holly. so far. Ah. <laughs> you were in, you were insulting my people so much. <laughs> uh, we do apologize if anyone in, a, in I almost said Italy, Italy. <laughs> wow. If anyone in Italy well, is it's the listening. Italians, right? The right? Italians. We're still doing that. Uh, if you are listening, the uh, Italians. Uh, let us know how of- how offended are you <laughs> by what we're saying? <laughs> Not if, uh, but shining how. a spotlight how on the. Um, uh, so uh, the Jalo. Um, experience, boom, movies, mm. basically started in the 60s with a film called uh, The Girl Who Knew Too Much. This is a black and white uh-huh. thriller with John Saxon in it, actually. Ooh, John Saxon shows up in a couple of these. He does. He, he's um, a, he's a fan. He was also in Tenebrae, which we watched. Yes, he was. Um, which might be my favorite. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Tenebrae, Tenebrae is my favorite. Tenebrae that's that's, a, that's a good one. Um, also directed by Dario Argento. Yes. Which means that Dario Argento oh, is shit. now inducted into the Saturday Night is Freak he? Show is... Wall of Fame. Damn. I know it took this long <laughs> okay. for me to get 
one of my. So you get all three of them on there, and you picked all three, didn't you? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, you did. uh, Deep red, yeah, uh, Suspiria, Mm -hmm. and Tenebrae, and Tenebrae. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, so uh, Mario Bava, who we've also talked about on Mm -hmm. this show, uh, not on the wall yet, I don't think. I don't I think, think we've so. only done one Mario Bava. What have yeah, we done? We did uh, Black uh, Sabbath, the three oh, party. Yeah, right? Yeah. We did Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he directed a movie. It was The Girl Who Knew Too Much, and it was basically the first kind of thriller, you know, the giallo. It was kind of started there. But it really took off in 1970 when Dario Argento made a movie called The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Mm. Mm. This is his first movie? That was his first movie? That was his first directorial debut. debut yes yeah because before that he was um <coughs> well he was a film critic for a while and then he became a screenwriter and he famously co-wrote once upon a time in the west mm. yes the well he's got story credit on it the sergio leone right uh, western, westerns mm-hmm. and, oh, which is like one not. of the greatest westerns ever made yeah so he's a film critic he was the son i think of a, a italian film producer and so he got, of course, you know, if you got that kind of pedigree, then you can make your first movie. It's Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Sure. Bird with the Crystal Plumage is so successful that... How successful was it? <laughs> okay, well, a little <laughs> anecdote. Uh, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they used it in one of the trailers. It was so successful, apparently, that Alfred Hitchcock said, I got to keep my eye on that Italian fellow or something wow. like that. I'm afraid of that Italian fellow. Can't I confirm praise. that that actually happened. <laughs> yeah, because like yeah, you got to think, like it, Alfred Hitchcock's alive at this point in time. Right. right. When these yeah. movies are coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I always compare it to is like, what was Alfred Hitchcock doing around this time? And it's like... Big uh, things. Was it like Torn Curtain or... Um, uh, well, I Frenzy I was 72. I could not pin it down. Or, no? No. So Dario Argento becomes known as the Italian Hitchcock. Mm. Oh, sure. Right? Of course. And he makes a series of movies called the Animal Trilogy. Well, later they are called the Animal Trilogy. Right, yeah. Because this is a a thing that Jalos, all the Jalos are basically ripping off in some way, shape, or form the bird with the crystal plumage. Right? So it has uh, one of those great titles where it's the bird... With a crystal plumage. Mm. So you got like some type of color crystal, maybe. You mm-hmm. got an animal. Usually a color, usually an animal. Right. I think they said or the Venn, texture. Or a... The Venn diagram is uh, or a number. Yeah. These are the things that make up great Jalo titles. Yes. Okay. And so uh, he makes the cat with the nine tails. All right. And then he makes, I think, the one that they say is the Venn diagram of the greatest Jalo title of all time. Four flies on gray velvet, where you have a mm. number... An animal or an insect, uh, and a, a color. color, and you know, I guess you're, velvet. You're velvet. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. velvet. Just even like what's her name was wearing at the end of this one. It's just like deep yeah, red. crushed velvet. Yeah, deep, deep crushed, deep red velvet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's Italy, and you got fashion and stuff like right. that. They got right. We don't have that here. <laughs> and art. that was yeah, that yeah. was all Italy. And uh, so then he goes off, and uh, I think after he does his three Jalo movies, right. Mm. And everybody's copying this. I mean, there's like a shitload of these movies. I still have not seen them all. I'm I trying to work. I was going to say, you're, waking, you're making I'm your way working, through it. Yeah. I can only imagine. <laughs> They're on A lot of them are on Amazon Prime. And Arrow oh, yeah. Video is putting out a whole crap. Oh, yeah. And Blue Underground and these guys. Uh, but anyway, he goes away from Jalo and he makes a comedy called The Five Days in Milan. And this thing bombs so hard. Then he has to come back to, you know, basically this is the licking your wounds kind of thing. I'm uh, like, oh, shit, if I want to be a filmmaker, I got to do what they like me for, which a lot of filmmakers, I think, do, right. right? Sure. And so he comes back and he does Deep Red. This is actually after the Jalo cycle has really kind of ended. This is 75. This mm-hmm. is like at the way end of it. So that's where we are tonight. So this is before Suspiria. Yes. Because Suspiria, I think, is like, you know, because this one was a big success. This one got exported to the United States. It played here. It was retitled uh, The Hatchet Murders in some uh, uh-huh. places. It was called Dripping Deep Red and others. It was called right. Deep Red and, uh, you know. And uh, then he did Suspiria. He did a movie called uh, Inferno, which was a sequel to Suspiria. And that one was a huge bomb or never really got released. And so what did he do after that? He went back and he made Tenebrae. It's always like he goes back to Jalo. It's mm-hmm. like, you know. It's like Stallone. Yeah, it's like he it, fucks yeah. up and he goes go back, back to, to Rocky. Yeah, go back to Rocky or, or <laughs> go back Rambo. To fucking Rambo. Yep. Yes. 
So here we are in 1975. Um, so in the American, um, yeah, what's the state? Well, you had had, uh, so at this point you would have had Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974. Mm-hmm. You would have had Rosemary's Baby and the Exorcist, which mm-hmm. basically like turned horror into a whole new thing, right? Mm-hmm. right. Very severe, uh, a lot darker. Yes. Uh, Last House on the Left and stuff like that. Jaws is this year, right? 1975. Yep. So this would have been made before he would have seen uh, Jaws. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Christmas is out at this point. Okay. That would have been 74. Did Dario Argento see Black Christmas? But the question is, did John Carpenter John Carpenter see saw Deep this. Red? He saw Black <laughs> Christmas. He saw them all. Okay, so, okay. Well, here's, uh, this is what I'm things saying. You'll, then we things you'll notice, about. yes. But uh, basically, I'm trying to make a case. I don't know if this has been made, but that, like everybody this says, is the, the, the American slasher film, Alfred Hitchcock is the grandfather of the American slasher film. Mm. With Psycho. No. Right. This is like the the, the grandfather. He starts mm-hmm. something that carries through to the the uh, the guy with the knife uh, yeah. slashing film. Yeah. And then is John Carpenter the father of the slasher film with Halloween? And then basically, like you know, Sean Cunningham opens the floodgates. Oh, well, sure. With Friday the Thirteenth, and that's what all the slasher films are basically copies of Friday the Thirteenth. But yeah. Halloween has the DNA. Of the slasher movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is Dario Argento the godfather of the slasher, American slasher film? I mean, if you watch Deep Red, it's hard not to argue that yeah. point. <laughs> okay. True. So let's, so this is, uh, yeah. So it all comes from the Italians, this is, this God is damn a it. a conversation that I don't know has been had on, like, whenever anybody talks about these movies. Yeah. Okay, so we're big fans of Halloween. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of right? course. Halloween comes out in 1978, so it was filmed probably in 1977. Mm-hmm. That was the same year that Suspiria came out. Mm-hmm. We assume that John Carpenter was aware of Suspiria because everybody goes like, man, that music from Suspiria by Goblin sounds a lot like the music from Halloween. Okay. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. go back two more years and uh, <laughs> take, a, take a look at Deep Red because holy well, shit. it didn't if come it, out it, it sounds, until 76, right. so that gets it even closer. Right. right? <laughs> so it's right there as yeah. far as being the influence. Okay. It so, even sounds more like uh, Halloween 2's music because it's more synthy and everything, but it is. Uh, uh, very similar. So you're thinking Almost that there is a... scandalously so. Yeah. That there's a direct influence right here, we're saying. And the music for Halloween that everybody like knows, oh. there's an antecedent in the music to Deep Red. I mm-hmm. would say so. Yeah. I would definitively say so. Well, this is the other thing that I think that this movie um, kind of... A lot of people say that this kind of codifies what the giallo genre is mm. because it has a lot of the elements that go into uh, – uh, it's like the perfect storm of giallo elements. What are those elements, Colin? Well, before we even get there oh. – uh, um, shit, what was I going to say? It was about the music. God damn it. Right? Music in these films had generally been like Ennio Morricone movie right. <laughs> music. Right, yeah. I think Ennio Morricone did Bird with the Crystal Plumage or, you know, uh, Riz Orlani, if I'm saying his name, or, or Lot. Yeah. There's uh, Bruno. Gorlami. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't, I need the list right in front of me. But there's a, a lot of Italian I, names to try to remember. Well, they're, 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 or, they're orchestral or vocal mm-hmm. soundtracks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then Dario Argento with Deep Red hires this band called Goblin, or they were the Goblins at the time. Oh, yeah. And so how would you describe this the Fucking soundtrack? Funky. Funky. Funky as fuck. Yes. Funky because it's basically... Like, Funk music. Yeah, because it is. <laughs> yes. Because, yeah, it's, it feels like, it's uh, 70s it feels like Funk. a grindhouse yeah. movie. At this point, it's, you know, wah, 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 guitar. Wah. Yeah. It's yeah. spectacular. It is wonderful. It is. I, it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and again, I always go back to, because I don't know why it's so fresh in my mind, uh, Dracula 1972, where you just have this uh, uh, horror movie that was uh, serious. And during the chase scenes and everything, you just got that funky music yeah. going. It's just like it, yeah. it, it shouldn't fit. But it works. It fucking works. It does. Man. <laughs> Surprisingly so. <laughs> it really does. Because any, anybody can just go into it and just have like creepy undertones and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. if you're going to like do it and be funky about it, bravo. It brings this movie to life. It is. And, and it's it, really loud. Yeah, it is loud. Very loud. Yes. They want you to know <laughs> it's <up>. happening. 
But it is it is kind of weird. Like you said, it's like, I suppose in another movie, or in this movie, if you would have brought like a regular composer in, there would have been creepy yeah. strings yes. mm-hmm. uh, going. Actually, yes. I think there is some of that there in there. There is. There is a little there bit. there is another composer on there. But I right. mean, like a lot of it is this kind of like prog rock. Is it prog rock? Progressive rock for 1970? Or is that like? Uh, yes, and Keith Emerson. Sure. And, you know, that yeah. kind of keyboard Maybe. freakouts and stuff like that. I wonder if the, when they, mm, uh, if this was the original score for it, or if this was a later addition to the movie. If this was the plan from the beginning, I wonder. Listen, I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure I, that. I think that he was, you know, I mean, he seemed like he was, um, Keying into the happening, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say scene, it's, it seems you know? like it's a modern choice, yeah, yeah, because that's why I wonder. Mm-hmm. It was like, was Dario Argento one of the younger directors doing work and doing these kind of things, like you know, because his films, well, I suppose a lot of giallos do take place with there's a lot of what the Italians consider hippies, mm. you know, but it's basically like mod. It, you saw Danger Diabolic, yeah. like those kind of hippies. Yeah, yeah. You know, are the Austin Powers hippies right. or something like that, right? Mod, like you said. Yeah. Bunch of goddamn fucking hippies. <laughs> Bunch of fucking hippies. <laughs> so he's into that kind of, but then in the 80s, uh, he does something bizarre where he starts embracing uh, 80s heavy metal. Hmm. So you saw Demons? Were you here for Demons? Yes. I was not here for demons. Demons, demons is loaded with a bunch of like Billy Idol and uh, and Motorhead, and yeah. <laughs> Motley Crue and stuff like yeah, that. Demons right. is good. I'm all right with that. Yeah. Are. And his movie Opera uses uh, 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 or, you know he uses heavy metal. That, uh, you know, kind of like he was doing here. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm just going to lay in like pre recorded heavy metal tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's opera. like a progressive thing or is like, this is what I'm doing. Well, the kids are into it and I like it and it's heavy metal and, you know, it's rock and roll. We're going to put rock and roll in the movie. Um, so I don't know here. So I guess this is what I'm just curious about. Now that you've seen this movie, um, is there a uh, connective tissue or can you tell me, can we figure out like what distinguishes the American slasher film from the Jalo? Like, what do they have in common, or what is not in common between the two of them? I would say uh, a POV of the killer, definitely something they yeah. have in common. That's shared. That's yeah. shared, mm-hmm. definitely. In Halloween. Yeah, I mean, but it, yeah, I mean, there's always that. Somebody's creeping around a corner, peering in on our characters. Um, that usually happens a lot. Mm-hmm. We're usually looking at them from a distance. Um, hands in shots. Um that happens in a lot of yeah, because a slasher movie will do that to, when they're trying to hide the um, who the killer is. Yes, mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, um, the killer is like you said usually uh, can be hidden um, in certain movies. When I mean, we get like Halloween, we get to see them like pretty outright within the well, movie. Not for the first half of it, they can right. hide who Michael Myers is with shots of his shoulder, right? And, yeah, and mm-hmm. hands and stuff like that. Um, the slasher movie, it seems to me like you know at least in those early ones. Uh, were less of a who who done it, and it was like the mental patient has escaped. Yeah. Right. There's the crazy. You know guy who, who it lives is. In the woods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. And There's then a he, story about who it is. Yeah. This is more of a a mystery. More of a yeah, like yeah. more of this uh, maybe more legend to the American version of it. Whereas, like you maybe, said, is that a thing that we like? Wore? So so Americanized, it's more folklore. Whereas this, it's more of like mystery thriller. Yeah. So we use the ghost story, but in our ghost story, like the guy's actually still alive or right. survived. Right, death, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Out there yeah. Yes, I would say so. That uh, I don't see that. Uh, from what I've seen, I don't see that in the Italian version. Mm-hmm. That's more us. Yeah, the Italian version, it's always like the killer seems to be motivated by uh, some kind of um, psychological uh, past trauma. Right. Mm-hmm. But he's known to the main characters. Right. Oh yeah, it's always somebody you meet at some point yeah. in the movie because the, the mystery yeah. you got to figure right. out well, who is it, which one of these characters that we've met. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's what I'm like is, is the killer. Scream like more of a giallo than a slasher film. I'm still working on that. I don't know. That's a hybrid, maybe. Yeah, because they never do. I mean, they never do POV of killer in the scream movies. But see, that one's calling back to like stuff like Prom Night, yeah, or Terror Train, where. It, you know, your killer is known to the right. the, the the people. He is one of the he is of the yeah. group. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, age of the 
uh, protagonists, antagonists, the people in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, teens usually or younger adults in slasher films. In slasher films, right? Uh, it can be. Uh, it's usually more adult in the Italian uh, films. Mm-hmm. Pretty much all of them. Yeah, yeah. There's no no younger people, but if they're younger, they're just like kids. And I was shit. gonna say they bring in creepy kids. They bring in creepy kids. Yeah. A creepy lot. little. Other than that, it's usually girls. older people. Yes, <laughs> the older, more experienced people. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they usually have a lot more police investigators as well in the, the Italian in the genre. Yeah. yeah, but always uh, ineffectual. I can't yeah. think of a single Jalo movie. Well, maybe the one with Franco Nero, The Fifth Court. I got to go back and look at that. Sure. One, where the protagonist, uh, Giancarlo Giannini, is one in uh, in uh, the be- black belly of the tarantula. But uh, <laughs> stop saying all the names. You're gonna ruin the game. <laughs> right. That's right. Coming soon. Yeah. Um, but the idea is that usually in a Jalo film, this is like part of what make how you know you're in a Jalo film. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are police, but the police are like secondary characters yes. and are unable to actually help you right. solve the plot. It's yeah. usually an amateur detective. Right. This is like what's the, important. Right. The cops aren't doing their, the cops are doing, ah, I don't know if yeah. they've admitted. And <laughs> possibly there for comic relief, but it's an yeah. amateur detective who is trying to figure out who the killer is on their own. Um, it's more in the Dario Argento movies, and maybe this is something he brought in where it's like uh, it's something that you remember. You know, there's like this thing with memory. Like yeah. there's a clue that the the protagonist has that he has to try and figure out that will solve the murder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it takes him the whole movie to actually figure that out. Yeah, Because mm-hmm. I haven't seen, like some of the other ones don't do that. They just usually, toward the end, it's like, and it's this guy. Yeah. Because... And then you get like the flashback, the explanation of like how in his past it was all fucked up. And, right. You know, whatever turned him into the killer. So that means that there usually is an inciting incident. Right. Do we see that usually in the movie? Because we saw a, bits of it in this one in Deep Red at the very beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then we get to see an expanded version of that later on once killers are revealed and whatnot. Which I did appreciate that because I had totally forgotten about that opening sequence mm. until they did the flashback at the end. Because it's just the, one. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. But the way they tied it together, I did appreciate that. See, I wonder if Halloween borrows that. Yeah. The idea that there was a murder in a house a long time ago. The house is uh, like creepy. There, oh, yeah. yeah. I, that's why when it happened, I hadn't like, really thought about that, but yeah. that's true. You just need Loomis sitting outside going, right? like, don't go in there, Lonnie. Yeah. You know, yeah. get your ass away, away from, from there. there. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, there's also like, you know. Sewing needles and whatnot in this <laughs> in in this movie um, mm-hmm. in what looks like to be the same living room that Laurie Strode was hanging out in. Yeah, she pulls. Uh, there's, a, there's a character who pull, has this the ball of uh, yarn mm-hmm. and pulls a needle out of it in order to defend herself. Yep. There's also a scene that takes place in a scalding hot bathtub. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, which we'll know from Halloween too, but yep. like I can't think of a movie prior to this, but you know I haven't seen everything. Right, where you get somebody dunked into a scalding hot uh, water, right, coming until, out more blistered and until they are dead. Sleepaway Camp. It was after this, though. Oh, that was after that. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, the other thing that the Italian giallo films do, and oh, you were here for. Um, I know who killed me. Yeah. Which is the movie Ooh, that we're we all. like only while well, we were talking about yeah. it, I'm like, oh shit, this is a fucking shallow movie. Right. Oh, yeah. But it has the ant- the protagonist who's not quite sure of like if she was remembering things correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had the killer with the, uh, I think the killer did wear gloves. I think so, yeah. But also had like the unique weapon, which you do see in some shallows, but not this mm-hmm. one. Well, I mean, unless you're saying the cleaver. The cleaver. That's pretty unique. Is her, mm-hmm. uh, the, mm-hmm. is the, uh, the method of choice. Um, uh, yeah, I totally lost my train. I know, we were on. I know who killed me. Which <laughs> who, who would have thought we would have brought that up again? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, it is. It is a giallo. We did talk about that, right? Uh, thank you, Lindsay Lohan. Amateur detective. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, Jesus, lost it. So, what this movie is about? Yeah. Are we trying to do the tie into Halloween? Mm-hmm. We got anything more on that? I think there's more connection. <sighs> there might be, but like, I'm just kind of now picking up on on that as we're talking about it like you said I, the 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 house i didn't make that connection till just now i'm like you're right there are little bits but it's i mean we're not talking about like a direct copy no not at all i mean if and we can't even prove that this is 
true. No, because if it was direct, no. if it was direct copy, the whole movie I would have been like, "Oh, this is fucking Halloween." But I wasn't like that. Yeah. Well, there's elements, there's influence. Yeah, it's, there are. It's obvious, but uh, again, like you said, we, this is it's conjecture. We can't prove that that John Carpenter did or did not see this movie. And even at this point, like, well, actually, so we years, might be. Did he say? Uh, Deborah Hill said something that I didn't catch at the time. It was on a commentary track, I think, off of a laser disc, which may still be the commentary track. Oh, sure, around. Oh, I'm sure it's there. It was the edited one that has like her, Jamie Lee Curtis, and John Carpenter, but they're not in the same room. Oh, and they're all put together. Uh, she said something about I can't remember. If, she mentioned dripping deep red, mm. Mm. but I didn't. I didn't know the movie as as dripping. It didn't connect with me. But I'm like, oh. so she did mention that they were at least aware of it. So mm-hmm. you know, you got that. Uh, there's also an interview that uh, uh, where uh, John Carpenter I think interviewed Dario Argento or the other way around. I think Argento interviewed Carpenter around the time of Escape from New York. Escape from New York was opening in Italy. And Carpenter was over there on a, uh, you know, the press tour, and Argento interviews him. So mm. if you ever want to look that up, it does exist out there. There you go on the internets. They're um, all talking to each other. Yeah, they're all friends. So we're saying it's like all stealing a subconscious, uh, you know, right? It's in some some consciously. Yeah, if you're making Carpenter's stuff head. and if you're making film and you like film, you're influenced by what you watch and and the people you like and all that. So yeah, sure, it's gonna sneak in there. Yeah, it's but. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you get like, let's make, here's money to go make a movie. What do you want to do? And maybe you really like this one. And so you kind of, you know. Like that element would work well in my story. Yeah. I think the most direct uh, Jalo to slasher lift, uh, anyone who's seen it will know uh, it was a Mario Bava movie called Bay of Blood, which we had here as Twitch of the Death Nerve. <laughs> Love uh, these names. Wow. <laughs> Everyone's got better names. <laughs> right. Uh, but some uh, two people having sex get uh, speared, uh, you know, through both of them. Oh, okay. Mm. And Double impalement. It, yeah. it is the shot from Friday the 13th yeah. part mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. It's the same like, one where oh. it's coming over, where it, if you're following the spear as it's uh, going over the guy's back and she sees it. Isn't that the shot? I think, yeah. And then the... Yeah, yeah. And it goes right through and into yeah. the floor. Into the floor. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yes. Jalo. Okay, so the final girl is an mm, American, yeah, that's slasher an American film thing. Thing again because we're putting more teens in the American slashers, and that's you're trying to attract a, a specific audience for that, and I think that's more the reason why that is why it's uh, yeah because the, they final have the girl. disposable income yeah and yeah. sure. Where in Italy, apparently, everybody went to the movies like every night of the week. And that's why they had to crank these things out in order to like change them every week at right. a different movie. So, yeah. Um, the violent set piece murders mm. uh, are shared between the two, uh, Jalo and uh, slasher films. Mm hmm. I can't think of like what was going on in America at the time. This had to seem like because a lot of these Jalo movies have like close ups of throats being cut or yep. stabbings, mm-hmm. or and then they just kind of get more and more elaborate, yeah. you know? Um, Bright red blood. Wherever, yeah, that's that, yeah. The 70s paint yeah. blood, mm-hmm. and blood, blood, fingernail polish blood. Oh, yeah. The best. But. There's nothing that gory in American cinema outside of like Herschel Gordon Lewis mm. movies. I mean, because even if you look at Texas Chainsaw, Rosemary's Baby, um, you know, anything that's coming out or, or The Exorcist around that time, it's like nothing's that explicitly no. No. gross. No, no it's not at all. all. So what did you think? I mean, am I off base here? I mean, like some of the, the, the murders in this are like, you know, splash with, well, the title's Deep Red. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it's very bloody. People are getting like chopped up, basically, going through panes of glass, throats cut, teeth, impalements, teeth. Knocked oh, up. the teeth. Oh, I forgot about the teeth. That guy's getting his, just just his mouth rammed into sharp corners of things. Yeah. Which. Like it's, it's very, it's very pointed. His aim is amazing. If, if they had added a, just a slight, like, popsicle stick breaking noise oh, into yeah, that yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh that would have killed me yeah well i've <laughs> seen others where they do it where they actually have like the you know the insert of the close, right the, they'll, they'll the do the very insert yeah the like, very close cool. insert of just a quick yeah yeah mm. 
Yeah. 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 It's unpleasant. It is. It, it is. is violent. It is. It's very violent. Yeah. Just that murder or all of them? It seems, I would say all of them. Um, I mean, they all seem pretty. Yeah, we well, got boiling, scalding water. Scalding water—that's yeah. pretty violent. You get uh, chopped up with a hatchet. The, yeah, the yeah. teeth. The teeth. Everything seems to be pretty violent. Yeah, and then, the, and then yeah. it looks like it hurts. Head broken open on a on the pavement of. I was gonna the, say the the ones that really got me were the final ones. The being drugged by the dump oh, yeah. truck and then run over by the car and then <sighs> the elevator at the end. Those were the I was like Jesus. Yeah. Beheaded by a yeah. necklace that gets stuck in an elevator. Yeah, yeah. everyone's worst fear. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, yeah. those those oh, were the two that I was I was kind of. They yeah, are violent. I, was I think that's put what, off a little bit. I mean, not what, in a bad way. Uh, well, our, I think that's what Argento keyed into the idea that you know, like his murders were like painful. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you're like they Whoa. look painful. Yeah, yeah. And then, because um, that's why I'm like, was Hitchcock doing? Hitchcock didn't really have bloody murders. I no. mean, even in like a Frenzy, where somebody gets you know strangled and. I think Torn Curtain also has yeah. the long, yeah. like the ten minute strangulation or five minute strangulation or whatever. But, but they were like bloody or again, like you said, like it looks like it hurts. Yeah, the pain. Like Argento's really going for the pain of what is happening in this because people are just are in agony when this is going on, screaming, and it just looks like it, the way he shoots it, it looks like it fucking hurts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, ours can be a little more. I mean, they look gross. But I don't know. There's I'm well, unless they're Tom Savini. Yeah, when Tom Savini does his, those ones look like they fucking hurt. I mean, yeah, that's what that's like true. he does I it better. I haven't true. seen the Prowler, but isn't that one you usually yeah. bring up? Or that, yeah, one's that just one looks like, like it hurt. Well, the Burning looked like it hurt. The, burning, I mean, the Friday the yeah. Thirteenth movies look like they, you know, mm-hmm. uh, whatever corkscrew. You remember and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Christmas Glover? What the hell's like, a corkscrew? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they took this kind of level of uh, of gore and violence and pain and kind of accentuated it. Eventually, the Italians moved from uh, Giallo into the uh, the zombie movie, mm. which Argento produced. You know, uh, well, yeah, Argento produced Dawn of the Dead, mm. which started the Italian zombie boom. Because then, you know, Fulci's probably the most uh, famous one. But then they get into cannibalism. Mm. And just like splatter in the early eighties, you yeah. know, and it just kind of deteriorates after that. Yeah, it does. And now the whole fucking industry's gone, which is just like what? <laughs> <laughs> like Italians ma- used to make movies. I mean, a lot of them were ripoffs of American. Yep. You know, they did uh, that westerns. Was a, that was a big industry. They did Sword and the Sorcery movie or whatever. The you know, like um, Samson and yeah, uh, Hercules yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, they did the crime thrillers. They did uh, the the science fiction uh, star crashes and yes. the, uh, escape from New York. Then they combine that with like the Conan, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's all gone, all mm-hmm. gone. They always shoot with uh, no no sync sound yeah. in this era. Always. How did that? I mean, I know why. Holly why was that? That a, is kind M-O-S. of MOS, huh? <laughs> MOS. Like, what? Why did that become tradition? MOS. Just, just because they knew it was. Go- oh, uh, without sound. That would be W. It's, it is. Uh, it's mit out sound because oh, yeah. uh, the person who came up with it had an accent and he would say mit out sound uh, instead of without no, sound. MOS. So it is there MOS, but it is without sound. Yeah, There's a little film history for you. Um, does the dubbing work like back in this era? I mean, like dubbing gets worse. It seems as time goes on, or we become less uh, accepting of it. Uh, it depends on how many you've seen. I'm, I'm sure if you didn't watch a lot of these and came into like this one and saw some of the dubbing in this, you'd be like, yeah. "What the fuck is going oh, on? Okay. This is yeah. horrible." Yeah. Because I mean, I give I love it because you know that's just the tradition of the Italian I was gonna movies. Say, I think we we look on it, we look back on it, and we look at it like with, with charm. Right. And There's a charm to it. There's and, a fondness yeah. to it. And we're just like, that's how they did it. And yeah. that's like, that's what part of the reason we like these things. Yeah. yeah. If you're not used to it, it can be a little jarring. You're just like, eh. But it's uh, even in parody. There was, uh, what was the guy's Astron 6 did um, the editor. Yeah, the editor, yeah. Which was like a Jalo-esque or Fulci-esque type thing. Yes. And they, they it just dubbed themselves over. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, I, I was wondering, when they, they dubbed them, is it all like completely different actors than anybody else? No, Does sometimes anybody, it is. Like they David do Hemming, yeah, that's his voice. It looks like his voice. Some of them, it's like, that's him. Yeah, that's but him it's not it. Daria Nicolodi. Do they just do this so to easily transfer it to different countries so they can... 
That was the idea. Yeah, it was. Uh, they they knew that they were making movies for other markets. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is they would bring in actors from like you know somebody from uh, France right. in like a, a famous a, French. Yeah, maybe in like the second or third build, you know, in some of these, or somebody from um, Germany, mm. right? And then you, your main person would be either American or English. And then, uh, so basically, no matter where it played in the world, you'd be like, hey, there's so-and-so. There's a star. Yeah. yeah, there's a star in, my, in the movie. Which is not so, a bad plan. Right? <laughs> and because they knew it was going to be exported to, and dubbed all these languages, they just would... It's like, fuck it. Yeah. We're going to be doing dubbing this and everything anyway. Why well, have sound? Just right. go. Yeah, we're it's gonna, gotta yeah. be. I mean, that's gotta be. Uh, that's one less thing to worry about on set. We don't have to worry about if it sounds good. You just like fuck it. We'll do it later. Yeah, but like mm -hmm. actors say, it's like just maddening. Or oh, they did sure. Oh, yeah. There'd be guys building the set next door, hammering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like the concentration is, you know, because everybody's just talking and yacking and doing their shit. Right. There's no, yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. No yeah. fight on you know? set. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. gotta be nuts. Well, uh, so David Hemming is the lead character in this. He mm -hmm. plays a guy named Marcus Daly, who's a pianist in uh, 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 you No, know, he's an engineer. You got that wrong. Right? He's an engineer. <laughs> There's a strong streak of silly humor running through yes. this movie, which Argento just eventually in his career went like, all in went nuts for it yeah <laughs> like, which is why personally silly. i don't like like a lot of his later movies because you're just like what the fuck are you doing and like oh that's a joke now he's just being silly oh, for silly's sake but only you get the joke mm -hmm. okay yeah it's that kind of thing mm -hmm. um so he was famous at the time he was in a movie called blowout anybody i've heard of it like the john travolta movie no different that blowout. is blow Oh, sorry, that's Blow Out. You're right. Yeah. He was in Blow Up. Blow Up. Okay, okay. yeah. Blow Up. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Blow Up. Yes. Is, takes place in Is that the bomb England. one? He's a photographer, fashion photographer. He shoots models, and he ends up, uh, Take, he thinks he takes a picture of a murder. But right, he's not yeah. Because sure, I don't think yeah. the body ever shows up. But so he's always blowing up the picture, you know, to try and, right? And yeah. the movie this sounds is, uh, it, it never really resolves that. It's not really <laughs> about that. It's one of those 60s mod counterculture movies. But uh, that movie, I think, also plays a lot into, like, the style of the Jalo. Because mm -hmm. the Jalo also will have... Um, Boyer. Um, feels like that him, him the pictures and, and, and capturing something it feels... Uh, something jalo ish to it. Well, you're, something you're, like that. You have the artist. Seeing something you shouldn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, the artist. Yeah. yeah. But the artist, you know, somebody who's a painter, a sculptor, a fashion mm. model, a lot of fashion models in these movies. Oh, no. Italian fashion, fashion models? Yeah. You're fashion kidding. And, you know, the, the architecture, I think, just naturally lends itself to like, mm -hmm. it's a very cosmopolitan uh, mixture of people and places and creeds yes. and all this stuff in usually a metropolitan setting. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, the American version, which is like usually out in the sticks somewhere mm -hmm. or in a small neighborhood away from the city. Um, so Hemming, I think he was in Gladiator. David Hemming. Anybody? Anybody? Which Gladiator? I, the, the Ridley Scott Gladiator. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Who was uh, he, was he the old guy with the white beard and everything? Well, he wasn't uh, Oliver Did he die Reed. during the filming of Gladiator? No, that, <laughs> I think that was Oliver Reed. Okay. Yeah. So somebody died during the filming and they had to... I'm trying to picture who he was in that. He was one of the... I remember him with the fucking... You just got to think of his eyes. Thing I, yeah. He's going to remember those eyes. Yeah. Well, he was a lot older. Yeah. A little more paunchy. Mm. Sure. But, sure. But so he plays a pianist in Italy who witnesses a murder... Yes. Mm -hmm. And then becomes the target of the killer. Because the fucking <laughs> the news that night is like, uh, uh, what does it say? Uh, the police uh, have a witness to the murder. And uh, what else did they say? What was the other thing? Um, they think he can identify the killer. <laughs> who lives in the, and he lives in the same building as the woman who was murdered. It's yeah. like, oh, set that dude up to be murdered. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. There's also like at the beginning of this thing to set that up. There's like this whole psychic uh, uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a demonstration in an old theater. Yes, old red theater. Where a woman is like, you out there in the audience have killed and you will kill again. Mm -hmm. Which makes her a target for the killer. Yes. She no, yeah. Because earlier I, would, I was trying to remember why she was killed, but that's why. 
I forgot yeah, about right, that. Because yeah. she when she was yeah. leaving, she's like, and now I know who the killer That's is. That's right. right. Okay. And the killer, the killer is I think, off stage. Yeah, because you have that them. voyeuristic camera. Right. It's, it's not just it's that. not static. It's just kind of moving a little bit, like it's peeking out. It always feels like it's peeking out. Yeah, spying on someone. The killer in this movie is present at every like he's eavesdropping on every single conversation that's being had. Because very I think active. The first time very I omnipresent. Yeah. 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 Like, so much so that it defies uh, believability. But like, sure. Okay. <laughs> right. For the movie. But this time around, I was more aware that like, oh, he was yeah, because you heard some sound. That means he was there to overhear a certain line of dialogue, which leads him to the next victim. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, because you're uh, in the background. And you're just like, what? What's that? Or somebody's walking around. Yeah. Or there's a shadow there's a sound somewhere. outside the window yeah. or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Or the camera shot itself is the killer. Right. Or a fucking doll busts into the room. Explain that, that one to me. Uh, That's fucking creepy. That was effective. Yeah. 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 yeah anything that just was, bursts in the room. That was creepy like, as hell. I mean, I knew something was going to come out, but I wasn't expecting that to come out. You never are. That was yeah. creepy. No one ever expects that. That was puppets. creepy. <laughs> I was like, the predictable part was that the killer was going to come through the window next to him. That was the predictable right. part. Yeah. But I did not expect that a fucking mechanical doll was going to come out right. of the closet Kick down across the, door the room. And, that yeah. was creepy as hell. Laughing like a crazy yeah. little thing. That was effective. No, thanks. Yeah. I'd it's rather be murdered. It was it very make- bizarre. Any sense? No, no, none, no, at all. none at all. None at all. No but sense. it was effective from a yeah. filmmaking yes. point of view. Uh, yes, it, it was very. Um, it's it's part very, of that dreamlike quality very, some of these have. It was very saw. <laughs> it it kind of was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very saw. It was it's very like, saw. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's what like because it almost ju- looks like it's it's on a tripod. Yeah, it does. Yeah. In. It does. Yeah, when I, I saw, was like, huh, I've seen that before. <laughs> how do you say it? When I saw saw. When you saw saw. That movie does I had call seen outs so. to different, and I'm like, well, that's deep red. Right. So yeah. It's like, clearly James Wan has seen this movie. Right. And Black mm-hmm. Christmas for one shot of the killer's eye. That one. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of bizarre murder sequences that happen as the killer works his way through the uh, all of these people who could possibly identify him. This is based on a murder that happened years ago in this house, mm. right? Uh, David Hemmings ends up teaming up with a reporter named Gianna something. Oh, yeah. Gianna. Yeah. Gianna. <laughs> played by uh, Daria Nicolodi, who is on the freak show Wall of Fame. Oh, Here we go. Shit. She is also in Suspiria. She co-wrote Suspiria. Oh, okay. okay. But she's briefly in it as like at the airport. Uh, she was in Tenebrae. Mm-hmm. She was the main girl in Tenebrae, and uh, she was in this. She and uh, Dario Argento like never her. were married, but they were uh, in a relationship. In a relationship for a while. Sure, their daughter. It was the whole Deborah Hill, John Carpenter thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just keeps going. I know. Uh, their daughter is Asia Argento, oh, okay. who's the actress who was in uh, George Romero's Land of the Dead mm. and Triple X. She was in Marie Antoinette too. Yes, she was. She was. With Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, she was. Yeah. And became uh, one of the right, first right, of the right. Me mm-hmm. Too. Harvey yep, Weinstein. she was yep, one of the first Me Too. She yeah. dramatized that scene in a movie that she directed called Scarlet Diva, mm. which you should check out. It's interesting, you know, from, she did two movies. The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things, I think is the other one. And Scarlet Going for those Diva. long titles, Italian to her core. Yeah, and now she's still doing stuff with Dad because she was in Trauma. She was in right. Phantom of the Opera. She was in Dracula 3D, and she yes. apparently is going to be in his new one called Black Glasses. Mm. That's right. Guy's still working. Still yeah. working. I forget that he's alive and working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't feel like he should be. And his movie, Dracula 3D, got it like a theatrical release here. Yeah. Like yeah, a couple of years ago. Did you see it? Yes, I own it. It is the craziest fucking thing. It's not good. It's okay. bad. You Who's know? in it? Uh, Rutger Hauer. Oh, and, right. Uh, Roger Argento. Right, Rutger right, Hauer right. is Van Helsing. I remember that. Oh, and Thomas, what's his, Kretsch, Kretschman? Kretschman? Yep, sure. Yeah, he's Dracula. He's not a good Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> and Colin would know. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. He's mm-hmm. seen a lot. Uh, aside though. from Jalo and uh, Slasher films. Dracula. You know, the monster movies. And no, we know. We know. <laughs> um, so basically this becomes like a whole convoluted plot. 
Yeah, it does. At any point, did you have? They're going from location <laughs> to location. He's just following up, um, uh, and he's he's walking into murders at this point, mm. just murder scenes that he's becoming a part of, which that have happened right before him. Right, and he never really becomes a suspect. He doesn't, which is weird because I'm just like he keeps showing up like, at murder he scenes. Said every everything. murder scene. Right. Well, this is yeah. the ineffectual <laughs> cops again. They're just like, eh, whatever. They're just not digging into trying, you know, figure this out. It's like, hmm, that and seems he doesn't. Suspicious. He doesn't call the cops. Not for that one, no. Because like when the the one that she gets like boiled in the bathtub or right. whatever, he just like looks at her and touches her, and then later on the old woman is like, "I found her." Right. So it's and like he didn't even call her, the cops. Right. Well, the guy goes, asked her, "Do you think the cops found her?" And he's like, yeah. "I would assume so." It's he like, goes why would you to think the that? Professor, yeah. The the exactly. psychology right. professor. <laughs> exactly. Like, like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, well, just probably like, because he didn't want to incriminate himself. Oh, I sure. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he gives a shit. And he's just he was, trying to. He's uh, breaking into places and just destroying property. And he's on the right track. There's a lot of that. He does yeah. just do what he wants. <laughs> he does. Like, he doesn't care. It's like, what do you do? I know you're a pianist, but what do you do? In the like, you just have uh, the time to go off and do this. We actually did watch the shorter version. Of All this. right. Uh, there's the American ones, like 140 or uh, uh, an hour and 45 minutes. That's the one we watch. That's the one I recommend. The other one's two hours and six minutes. What's in that one that's not uh, in this A one? lot more stuff between... Um, uh, a lot more... Is it Mark? Is it a lot more armor? Mark there? and... Yeah. yeah. Between him and Gianna. Oh, okay. Not necessary. Kind of, not necessary. Right I like her, though. So I wouldn't mind. Her. What's, uh, what's Gianna, her character like? She's, uh, she's very uh, cheerful in her pursuits, I would say, in this movie. She is... Uh, she's the reporter, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And her own photographer. Um, but she's... Uh, yeah, she's like uh, she's like the Italian Lois Lane. Yeah, yeah, she's let's, let's ambitious. And yeah, go get her. Yeah, and she's trying to figure it out. She's like, we could team up and do this. She's like, I'm just as good as a man. Let's arm wrestle. You know, she mm-hmm. is she's Italian Lois Lane basically. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know. See, I don't know. That's why I'm like, was that a brave political choice uh, for the movie to do? Sociological I don't know. Choice in 1975. I don't know. In 1975, Italy. I have no idea. Because as the about. hero of your movie, Marcus is uh, claustrophobic, gets sick in, sick in mm-hmm. cars, loses arm wrestling to a girl. It seems like a choice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. But, you know, again, she doesn't end up final girl. He doesn't really end up saving her. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's another thing, I guess, with, you know, the hero right. uh, archetype. Um, so I don't know how far we want to go into spoiler territory. Or do we? Do we? Do we always, always do. We always, we always yeah, do. Okay. Stopped. Yeah. So if it's you, been seven years, Colin. Yeah. We always do. <laughs> okay. Well, just in case this is, you're listening to this because it was a deep red podcast. Uh, yeah, we are going to spoil the end of this movie. Okay. So how does this? What have we? Have we even mentioned? Uh, uh, what's his name yet? Carlo. Carlo. We haven't. Have we mentioned Carlo? No. Carlo is. Uh, Carlo is his drunk friend who is another pianist. Yeah. Only he does it for. Money, yes. where uh, Mark does it. Money for and women, because he likes to tickle the fanny. Yeah, mm, does but he it, though? <laughs> I mean, he yes, he does. I mean, Who's fanny? Yeah, I was like, not women. Who's to say? Not women. But he likes women? to tickle the fanny. Yeah, not yeah. women's. Because that's where it's like, is because a lot of these movies do have like a killer who is has some kind of it's a psychosexual right. There's yeah. Or yeah, something that, that sexual undertone. Yes. Um. So we're kind of directed to him, but the. Uh, you know, and thinking, I don't know, because uh, um, uh, you had seen this before, Sean. Right? Yes. We'd watched it. Did you remember who the killer was? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Holly's watching it mm-hmm. for the first time. First time. Um, there's a scene early on, yeah. which I thought was really well orchestrated in a hallway full of paintings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did you catch this? Yeah. What? How did this play to you? This is a spoiler territory. You're going to need to jump ahead here if this is your first time. But how did that mm-hmm. play? Did you see... Who the killer was in that shot? I didn't honestly. Oh okay. no, because right. I didn't either. I didn't either. First time <laughs> yeah. I watched it, I missed it. Yeah. I was just like, "Wait, was there something?" And I think I, I yelled it out. I was like, "Is there somebody in that mirror?" Yeah, I. Well, but I didn't see who it was because I. I remember the first time, and this is like, I'm like, this movie is brilliant, and you could never make this again because yeah. now the impulse that I had was like, you got to rewind it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and if you rewound it, you would ruin the movie because yes. you would clearly yeah. see. Clearly see. Yes. Yeah, but no, but it's just a it's a flash out of the corner of the eye. It's like it's perfectly. Where you're just like, wait, what? And yeah. then you miss it, and it's gone. Yeah, it works. Yeah, and then he's going through there later, going like, wait, did you guys move something? Because it feels like there's something here that's yeah. not here anymore. And we're mm-hmm. like, what are you talking about? Right? I don't know. It, yeah, is that I didn't know. You know, maybe. 
but that's what was actually happening. Like, you know, the 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 painting was gone. Mm-hmm. But it turns out it's not a painting. It's the uh, it's a mirror. Killer is reflected. Mm-hmm. Where then led this entire way through the movie, spends an awful lot of time in the haunted house. Mm-hmm. Where he's yes. Re- uncovering stuff behind wallpaper or behind you know the plaster, mm-hmm. and finding eventually the body of the uh, the father of this uh, domestic situation that was killed on Christmas Eve. Right. Uh, ha- uh, that's a, a holiday. Right. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, Hol- holidays for slashers and everything. <laughs> there it is. Happened on Christmas, yes. Okay, so maybe <laughs> yep. that might be reaching. I don't know. It feels all right. Okay. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. The traumatic oh, wow. event happens on and Christmas is a Christmas tree. Right. So apparently what they did was, right, a mother stabs the, the father. Yes. Mm-hmm. Son sees it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then they wall the room off that the murder took place in. Right. Yeah. Totally covered up outside and in. And then vacate the house. This becomes the centerpiece of the movie is like trying to figure out whose house this is. Right. Mm-hmm. And eventually a, uh, a drawing leads them back to a school where they uncover the name of the killer. And it's Carlo. Mm-hmm. Turns out it is uh, the friend, the, the pianist friend. Yes. Who then confronts them with a pistol. Yes. So we're like, it is him. Because clearly he stabbed Gianna. Mm. They're in the climax. Right. Mm-hmm. Then he is dispatched uh, by a garbage truck. An in, accident. In, in bizarre circumstances. Yeah. Yes. So our heroes don't actually interact with him at, at all to cause this to happen. It's just he wanders no. away from the police I, and dies. I do like the guy, the officer who uh, just bursts through the window to start yeah, shooting at Carlo. That, that guy's was, my favorite. That was pretty great. It's like yeah. a SWAT team move, but he's just like. Psh. Yeah. Then everybody's That's great. Like really chill after he like runs out. They're like. Yes. Well, it was. Uh, yeah, it, was it was him the whole time. Good thing that. Wait, he's out there. And then they're like, "We have to go." Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> then they're shooting at him. Like, oh yeah, that's jumping right. over we're fences. Here. Yeah, yeah everyone, we're here to get him. Everyone is very composed. Everyone in this stopped movie. for tea and smoked. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Well, they're they're Italian. They're just cool. A tea? Uh, no, it's a cappuccino. Oh, sorry, cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, Which they did. The the I love that. I love the little detail like that where he's got the tiny little cups for the cappuccino. I love the one cop who's behind him who's just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motion. Yeah, yeah. It's like, ah, you got enough for four. Come on. And it's like, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> won't share his cappuccino with all him. those little yeah. characters. The espresso. Bits yeah. The little shit happening in the background. I like that. That was good. Including a full size recreation of the uh, the Nighthawks. Yeah. Uh, Lovely. Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason. There's a couple of those little, they're, they're like uh, installations within the movie. Yeah. It feels like still lifes that happen within the movie. It gives an eerie quality to uh, things that are going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they were going down a like good a, background. Uh, was it like a, a street? And all the people are like staring intently in the, the store windows and they yeah. never move mm-hmm. yeah. for like five minutes. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, what the? It's just, oh, you guys, you were well, looking at that? Like, those must be the most entrancing store <laughs> displays yeah. ever because they're just posed there. Yeah. <laughs> and then he drives by the construction guys and it's like they're on. And it's like we're going through It's a Small World at this point. Yeah. Where they're just on a track to do the, the one Hall thing. The Hall of Presidents. Like he's, yeah, he's <laughs> hammering. Yeah. And yeah. The guy's just looking. Or in the, well, in the diner, the one woman is just That's smoking. why it's so noticeable because every scene in this movie, either it's like that where everyone is just either completely still or like an animatronic or there's nobody. Yeah. It's completely dead zone. Yeah. You're in these, I assume, public squares. Yeah. And it's like the apocalypse has yeah. happened or something. There's nobody left on Earth except our protagonist. Mm. Which makes it feel like it's a stage. Stage, yes. It or it's like studio stage. bound. Mm-hmm. Yes. But clearly this is an outdoor thing where they just like cleared everybody. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. the there's square. these great like Italian sculptures and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Fountains and, and what have you. Yeah. The, the genius of yeah, shit. the genius of filming in Italy. Yeah. Everything's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I like the uh, the way that because um, I don't know that this occurred to me on my first watch until because like uh, uh, after Carlo is dead, mm. Mark goes back to the where he initially saw uh, Helga, the psychic woman, being murdered. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he stands there, and which he's is like, the apartment of, like above his. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he's scratching his head. And you're like, what's he thinking about? I wasn't thinking like, wait a second. See, I was. Okay. Yeah, I was. Once they come back. Because even when they revealed that it was Carlo, I was like, 
That doesn't make sense because we saw the killer and Carlo in the same shot. How could it have been Carlo? Like, I was thinking that. Okay, which is what's coming to Marcus at this point. He's like, wait, they were in the same shot at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Could not be him. A lot of, like, uh, reliance on memory. Yeah, I was like, I was like, either that's, like, a mistake. But it's, but it's (laughs) also. A continuity thing or. But it's something we saw. So the fact that the character is remembering the same thing yeah, exactly. never feels like a cheat because no, we saw it as well. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly. if we haven't put it together, then we can put it together then at that moment. Be like, yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were there. It yeah. can't be him. Yeah. Because so you forget that in the heat of the moment of Carlo pulling a gun on people and then dying so savagely and getting right. his head run over. <laughs> you forget those things happened. So it's nice to have the character be like, it doesn't something doesn't make sense. So but where goes does back. your head go after that? I mean, what were you thinking? I was going through the list of who else was in this movie. <laughs> yeah, because right. I thought for yeah. a while that it could have been Gianna. There was I did, scene. too. Yeah, right. I did, too. I after thought for she sure. she rescued him from the fire, I'm like, it's her. This I thought for sure. Gonna... And right. then, like, when she got stabbed, was like, I mean, it was probably a fake stabbing. Like, I thought uh, for sure it was Gianna. Yeah. yeah. So you were angling toward her the whole time. I was, yeah. Because, I mean, really, who else do you have? There's He knows Carlo. Mm-hmm. He knows Gianna. Everybody else is pretty much being killed. Uh, I also Out thought, like, the... uh, Carlo's friend, the guy in the apartment, his lover. Right. I was yeah. like, it could be him, but that would be weird. Like, that it, would be out of love. Be, but yeah. these movies do that. They do that. do that. Yeah, Which that's is why true. you can never be 100% sure to that's peg it down true. to some person. like, I don't know. This could be somebody's. Uh, what, what movie did we watch? It was like, it's his brother who showed up. Um, what the fuck movie was that? The Christmas one with the Santas. Yeah. Um, wasn't oh, it? the don't, uh, yeah, yeah, don't oh, open until, don't don't open until Christmas, Christmas, where it's just like, yeah. it's his brother at the yeah, end, like shit like that can happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, that's, point. That can't that's happen. true. It happens all the time. So you never can really be like, I know this for sure. I forgot about that movie. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, it turns out to be, it, it turns out to be, it's Carlo's mother, because obviously she's the one who right, did, did the kill stabbing. the father yes. and traumatized the kid. Did Carlo do any of those murders? Um... No, he stabbed Gianna, but she no, didn't I think die. He stabbed Gianna, and I yeah, think that was it. That's it, and that was in protecting mom. Yeah, yeah because it, yeah, just because they got too close yeah. to find out, and I think that's why. Mom's a former actress who apparently mm-hmm. went crazy. The idea mm-hmm. is that she says, I think, when we revisit the um, the scene, you know, the, the inciting incident, mm. she uh, was put in a mental institution, or she's about to go back. She was an actress. She says right. that, you know, she had to quit acting. The likelihood is that she went kind of crazy. She was put in an institution. She came out with the threat of going back. She's like, no, I'm going to kill you. Never again. Yeah. Right in front of the kid. Which and, is, which is, I love how it's put together because the dad's kind of walking like this and he's walking up to the son's like, ah, oh, just waiting oh, to get that knife stuff. in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because he's just preparing to get that knife in the back. And it's just, it's, it's an, again, it adds to the dreamlike quality of it, but it's a weird setup. Yeah. Again, it feels very stage like. Like it's like if the camera moved left or right, any yeah. you'd see the stage disappear. It's and, very controlled, I guess. Yeah, is the, yeah. You know, I guess like, so. This guy has a rigid lock on, you know, yes. like what he wants to see, how you he wants you to behave. Right. Mm-hmm. Apparently, every time there's a murder scene, those are his hands because he's just like instead of telling an actor how to do it, I'm just going to do it, mm-hmm. and that way I know I'm getting what I want. Mm-hmm. All of his movies. It's his he's the hands. He's the black gloved killer. Mm. Um, the yeah, so it turns out to be mom. And then mom, uh, you know, the, oh, Marcus mom. remembers that, yeah, the, oh my God, this is a mirror in this hallway, mm-hmm. you know. And so I was looking at her. And uh, then she's beheaded by the. Those, uh, were, those were the creepiest fucking paintings I've ever seen. Yeah, those eyes. The just, eyes in the painting. Just all weird faces. They all look like, um, what's the Edward Munch, the, the scream? Edward, Edward Munch is the yeah. scream. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The munch? Monk? It's spelled Monk? Munch, but it's Monk. Okay. Yeah. Edward Munch, the scream. Yeah. yeah. If you remember Monk. how Paul Rudd says it in fucking an outtake of um, Knocked Up. That's a deep cut for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they're very creepy. Paintings. Yeah, they're, they're very really creepy. creepy. Yeah, I like them. Well, um, I mean, that brings us to the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, the little mom gets caught in an elevator and whoosh. yeah, head gone. Pool and of then blood. Pool you of... have been watching. Yes, deep red. I kind of like that too. It's I kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like it's like oh, <laughs> like it's going to keep going. It's like you have been watching. Yeah. Now continue watching Deep Red. It's an experience. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. Because I think <laughs> this maybe break. for Suspiria at the end was that you have experienced Suspiria. I You've so. been watching Suspiria. Something I can't like that. Write, something. He does the same thing. Yeah. Um, Deep Red. 
And it's quick. Like, she dies, and we're just looking at a puddle of blood mm-hmm. over uh, with credits over it. And she's like, okay, yeah, cool. movie's over. Yeah. yeah we only Get out, he's saying. Um, camera work. Oh, yeah. We forgot about the camera work of the uh, the yeah. close-up camera work in this mm-hmm. movie, which I, I like a lot. Um, yeah, it's it, cool. Again, it's otherworldly. Um, it's really it's shot really well. The close up, kind of like, like a periscope camera. Or it's, something it's, like yeah. that. it's like a uh, it's like a macro lens or whatever you want to call it, where they're mm. just getting real up close in but there. But it moves and does these like yeah. hands and tilts, and you're like, how the hell? And it looks are really cool. That? It looks it like they look cool. built big versions of things. Yeah, and they were just like filming the close it up of the record player. Yeah, yeah. Or they're going around the knives and the marbles. The little two, the, the little toys. Yeah, yeah. it's. That's really cool. I still don't know how they do it. I, uh, I'm not entirely sure myself. I Maybe like it. I like setup. it with the contrast of like the big wide shots, like with with the big sculpture in the square. Mm. I don't know. With these kind of macro yeah. things. Yeah. We yeah. tried to rip this off in a film that we made called Slip. That's right. You can check this out. <laughs> and Sean was there. We so shared, many rip We filmed it in Sean's I am apartment. a black glove killer. That's right. You are have joined was, the Pantheon. I am, I am the Pantheon. I am up there with Dario Argento. Jar, Dario Argento, I am a black glove killer. I'm very proud of that fact. I don't know I if know. I've ever told you that. Because you came up with the, uh, what was it, with the scissors. The, the, the scissor snapping and yeah. the, the shaking hand. And yeah, oh yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very proud uh, of that. It's on Amazon Prime. You can look it up. <laughs> you guys are so uh, proud of yourself. So <laughs> proud. A lot of this movie, in spite, well, I mean, no, I, it was an homage. It's a rip off yes. of Dario. There's hanging, there's hanging dolls. There's red and green lights. I'm, I'm glad you know what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, glad. Yeah, I have no. no illusions. There's the jilted lover. Yeah. As it were. There's All black sorts gloves. There's everything. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Do we have time for Jalo shots? Last uh, time? Why not? Last time we uh, did Tenebrae, this is a thing we do when we uh, when we have a Jalo on the show. You can play we, along at home. That's right. You can p- play along with Jalo shots. You don't actually have to. We're, it doesn't take too much time to actually pour the J and B whiskey. No, we're pouring the metaphorical J and B whiskey mm-hmm. right here, right now, on the show. J and B whiskey. Why? Uh, because it's a staple of Jalo movies. It is. It was in Slit as well. It's the world's party whiskey. <laughs> Every single one of them. Has a bottle of J&B whiskey at some point. All right. So the idea is, what do we do? Five of them each? Five each. Can you determine a oh. giallo, real giallo title real giallo, from a fake, fake giallo. giallo title? Now, did you go to a giallo generator to get yes, these? Yes, I did. Okay. okay. <laughs> so here we go. Sean, number one. You uh-huh. ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right. Your vice is a locked room and only I have the key. That is a giallo. You are correct. Mm, you do not you. have to wow. take a shot. All right, Holly, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, the killer reserved nine seats. No, not a giallo. You are wrong. That oh! is a giallo. You have to take shot. a giallo <laughs> shot. Sean. Mm. Uh, death is a dark figure with hands of stone. No. You are correct. That yeah. is not a giallo. Uh Holly. Mm-hmm. Kill the fatted calf and roast it. <laughs> no, that is a no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um. All right, Sean. Wait, what are we on? Three. This is yes, three? three. Okay, number three. Oh my god, I was. Uh, are you blind? Okay, <laughs> the bodies bear traces of carnal violence. <laughs> no. That is a giallo. Is it? You have it's also a torso. You have to take. Oh drink. come on. <laughs> uh, okay, um, Holly names. Okay. Why are those strange drops of blood on Jennifer's body? No. That is a giallo. What? Oh my god. Jesus. All right. So this is number four. This is crazy. Uh yeah. Sean, uh, the black cat with the blood-stained lips. Yes. That is not a giallo. God damn it. <laughs> Should have known. <laughs> All right, Holly. Uh, five victims for the maniac. Yes. No. God that damn is not it. I'm terrible at this. And the final one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sean, death laid an egg. No. That is a God damn it. <laughs> And Holly, yes. last one. Okay. Uh, two white doves in the web of the spider. No. That is not a Yes, giallo. I got one. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Of course, we cannot quiz Colin on this because it's pointless. <laughs> it's true. Well, no, I I don't know how. Like, death laid an egg. I was like, what? Death laid what an egg. How about the house with the laughing windows? 
strip nude for your killer house. Uh, <laughs> that is that is definitely a yes. That, all those those these are real yeah, ones. Seven yeah. deaths in the cat's eye. The flower with the petals of steel. Those are real Jalo yeah. titles. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna go. Do, or no, all, do all Jalo titles make sense to their movies? No. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen. Like I said, some of those are like what? <laughs> but they just have the greatest fucking titles uh, of all movie, any movie in histories. Okay, so uh, we're gonna answer some of your mail, and to yes. do that, we're gonna have to summon. Our mailman, his name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his black gloves and his uh, trench coat. Trench coat, he's got his, uh, what's the fucking hat? Fedora. fedora. It's fedora. It's got his mm-hmm. fedora on. He's yep. very snazzy tonight. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of those. And yeah, I mean, that's basically the costume. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way that uh, we, this is the interactive portion of our show. We hope that you will write in and tell us what you think about tonight's uh, movie or some of the other movies that we watch. And the way that you can get a hold of us is on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Tonight, yes. Tanya, about our movie Deep Red, Tanya Taylor writes in and says, Everyone says Suspiria is Argento's best movie, but I love Deep Red. To me, it has every element that this genre is known for. It's a crazy story, but you don't care. The visuals are amazing. Your podcast is the best. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. I would uh, I would not say it's his best, Suspiria. I would also say it's not. I would, uh, Tenebrae, I think I said it before. So that's his best. Well, Tenebrae is his best Yalo for sure. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Suspiria is not a genre. It is not. That's it very not. true. Everybody thinks it is because it does have a black glove killer, but that is yeah, a that's different. It's a supernatural horror. Yes, movie. it is. Yeah, it's not a genre. Folks, seen the end of that movie? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill Hayner writes in and says, "Deep Red and Suspiria are Dario Argento's masterpieces. His plot lines can be dreamlike and nonsensical at times, but he more than makes up for it with bright and lurid visuals and killer soundtracks." Yeah. Argento mm-hmm. definitely has a style like no other. It's Y'all's. true. Very true. Uh, Travis Legler says, I've never heard of Deep Red, yeah. but as with so many other movies, I'm sure I'll watch it after hearing the Freak Show podcast. Mm-hmm. 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 Carson Snar also says, I have not seen it, but the creepy doll person that we put on our, uh, uh, our social media, yeah. the little, yeah, whatever, the animatronic. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dude, yeah. He says, that has got my attention. As it, it should. As it should. Yeah. Uh, Peter Gatt says it's not in my favorites of Argento. Oh, no. Interesting. Okay. Uh, about uh, our previous episode on Creep Show, Maya Madsen writes in and says, I think it was I was six when I discovered EC Comics. There was a paperback lying around the house that I realized much later was the five vignettes from the British Tales from the Crypt movie mm. collected in one volume. I read it until the pages fell out. I was at the movies with my mom, and she gave me a choice between seeing Creep Show and Six Pack with Kenny Rogers. <laughs> I was afraid of the poster, so we saw Six Pack. <laughs> Six Pack with what? Kenny Rogers? Well, I don't know what this theater. is. It's like a race car movie. Oh, Isn't it a no. stock car and ass car movie? Oh, Something like okay. that? Or like bootlegging? I don't know. Something. Something. You chose poorly. <laughs> you chose poorly. Uh, Chris Huddleston writes in. Sea Huds. Huds. Happy birthday, Sea Huds. That's right. Yep. Uh, he says, it's a great episode. On Creep Show, it's one of my all favorite movies. I vividly remember seeing the oversized comic at Walden Books when oh, I was yeah. a kid, thumbing mm-hmm. through it and being totally freaked out by what I saw. It was probably another ten years or so before I saw the movie, but that comic was always in the back of my mind. Oh sure. Uh, about the Shutter Creep Show weekly television show, he says when they announced it, it was my most anticipated upcoming form of entertainment. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed. Yeah, that's what I, I think hear. most people were. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I was thinking of horror comics like EC, and it reminded me that comic book giant DC Comics, who brought us Batman and Superman, had a horror comic called The House of Mystery. It had its own hosts as well, Cain and Abel, they were called, and it was briefly hosted by Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, as well. I actually would like to see DC pursue this avenue for comic book movies, considering their superhero ones are hit and miss. More miss than hit. Yeah, I think uh, mm-hmm. Cain and Abel in the House of Mystery figure big into the Sandman uh, mm-hmm. also. So I think they were in the script for 
uh, the Sandman movie, which was never produced, but mm. there is a podcast called, if we're going to plug other podcasts, mm. uh, the greatest movies never made. They mm-hmm. did a Sandman right. episode. Yeah. And uh, I, I think Cain and Abel show up. Uh, DC also has uh, Justice League Dark, which is a stupid fucking title. Right. But it brings in their greatest, like, uh, uh, horror, um, you know, and spooky characters. Yeah. All in one thing. Uh, Sean Roger writes in and says, I'm listening to this episode now. Sean Roger, by the way, is like one of the biggest creep show fans. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, is this the music? Yeah. Are, yeah. He's oh, is he shit doing the music? Ton. Yeah. The he's hunting went, down the music? Yeah. 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 I read this. That's a hell of a thing, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, an achievement in life. Yeah. He says, uh, listening now to your episode, and it's funny how you mentioned how ca- cartoon-like the Jordy segment is. George Romero told Stephen King to play the character as if he was Wiley E. Coyote. Oh. There you go. That and where sense. is Mr. Sean Tyler on this episode? Yeah. And Clement Weather uh, stopped me from being here that night. Um, once I watch Creep Show, I'll let y'all know what I think about it. You haven't, still haven't seen it. I have not watched Creep Show in many a year. Wow. Well, no, you just put yourself on. Uh, I know. You gotta watch it. I got to watch it. I got to get uh, to it. Well, Feline Fatale wrote, writes in and says, and "This is because you know, Creep Show is one of the movies that listeners voted on. Yes, it's the number one. Yes, 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 uh, yes. She says, so no society then. Nope. Yeah, she says, well, I'm yep. sad because of my fellow Saturday Night Freak Show listeners. Creep Show is an awesome choice. Still, Creep Show Two is also a solid and would be a great future episode too. I thought she also said maybe I cut it out." I thought she was also like, where is Sean on this episode? Oh. Yeah. It was like, what? I know. You're missing, and everybody's like, hey. I know, and it's the number one movie, and I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm mad I missed it. Uh, Jacob Law says, I would recommend another ho- horror anthology mixed with social commentary called Tales from the Hood from 1995. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good I old Tales, Tales from, from the Hood. hood. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot to mention on that episode, right, because we were mm-hmm. talking about the team up of George Romero and Stephen King. Right. George Romero made an anthology movie with Dario Argento, and it was called Two Evil Eyes, where they each did Edgar Allan Poe stories. Oh. In George Romero's segment stars Adrian Barbeau, E.G. Marshall, uh, Tom Atkins, and the guy, oh, George Romero's wife, who's in Creep Show, and, yeah. the, and the guy who is like in the Don't Call Me Billy scene with George Romero's wife. Right. He is also in Two Evil Eyes. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. Boom. There it is. Tied it all together somehow. (laughs) Yeah. Way to go. So now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of Deep Red. We're going to start with... Sean, what did you think of Dario Argento's Deep Red? Mm. Um, I like Deep Red. Uh, This is my second time seeing it. Um, There's a a lot of elements I like about it. Like... uh, uh, the uh, the dreamlike quality of it is kind of what visually draws me into this movie. Um, I like the staging, like we talked about, um, how it's shot. Um, the uh, it's also a good, like uh, it's also a good whodunit movie. Um, the kills are like pretty good. It's just creepy. Um, I think one of its biggest um, saviors is the music mm-hmm. because it does. As far as the action that's happening, um, we uh, at a certain points we are just following Marcus around a lot as he's you know uh, in real time <laughs> sleuthing. It's yeah. it's like real time yeah. sleuthing with him. Yeah. And if we didn't have this music, I think we'd, we'd be at a loss in some of these scenes. The mm-hmm. the music kind of kicks in. At it does. Those points, it wakes you up. And it wakes you up. It and you're does. just like, all right, cool. We're getting funky and everything. So uh, that's a big plus for the movie. Um, yeah, I like this one. Um, as I'm going through and seeing more of Argento stuff, um, I'm, I'm, I'm finding that I, I like it a lot. Um, I'd put this, yeah, this is definitely up there um, as far as the movies from him that I do like a lot. Um, I'd watch this one again. This one's a good one. Um, so, yeah, I recommend Deep Red. Uh, it's one of the, uh, I think it's one of the must-sees, especially, like, considering the score of it. Everything we talked about with, like, its comparisons to Halloween and everything, Um it's it's fun to watch just to see the similarities, but it's also like it also all works very much on its own. Um, and I had a good time with it. So I recommend uh, Dario Gento's Deep Red. Profundo Rosso. <laughs> Holly. Uh, yeah, no, I, I am in complete agreement with you. I, I think this movie is is beautifully shot. I, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, 
and it it really encapsulates a lot of artistic point of view, um, which is really spectacular. I mean, obviously, being shot in Italy, that's going to happen. Mm. You know, we don't have that in every setting. Um, but they just set the it, camera up and it moves by itself. Did like you know that just, in Italy? Yeah. That's what just what happens in it's Italy. It's just there. Yeah. It just Art just happens there. <laughs> yeah. It just, it, it just appears. People shit art. I don't know right? if you know It's this. beautiful. It's in it's the water. Beautiful. Um, so it's, it's a gorgeous movie, and I totally agree about the, the music. I think there are so many points in this movie that we could have easily just gotten lost in boredom but the music kicks up and it brings you back. Like it, there was no point that I was truly bored watching this movie. And I honestly uh, can attribute that to the music. Cause there was like we said, like there was these sleuthing points where it was just like, there's nothing happening, Lots of sleuth. but the music makes it feel like there's definitely something mm. happening. So the, the funky music is definitely a selling point in this movie. It really brings it together. Um, the kills are great. Um, there's a lot of surprises in this. I, I, I was impressed with how many moments I was I was surprised um, by looking what was happening. Looking at you, dollface. Yeah, no, there was there was some, yeah, there was some unexpected moments that I really appreciated. Um, definitely creep factor. Um, very uh, very effective. Um, yeah, I liked this movie. I, I was not sure. I always get nervous with 70s <laughs> Italian. <'cause Yeah. laughs> I know you do. Huh? I always get nervous. <laughs> but yeah, no, God damn is aware. But yeah, God damn it. I liked this movie. I thought it was great. Um, I definitely recommend Deep Red for sure. I think it's one of Argento's best movies. It might not be his best movie, but I think it's one of his best movies for sure. Um, yeah, I recommend Deep Red. Colin. Well, before we get to me, Colin's like, fuck this movie. Michaela has written in oh, from shit. her si- sick bed because <laughs> that's what's funny. She, you know, we were talking about like, you know, she hadn't seen it. Mm-hmm. And then she texted me. She's like, hey, you got the blue underground Blu-ray? Because mm-hmm. it turns out I have it. Ah. <laughs> of course. So she watched it. She says, this is her review. She says, I'm not very well versed in Jalo films, so this is my first time watching this. Deep Red has an incredibly strong start, some really creative kills along the way. The elevator necklace, necklace beheading and the face smash into every corner of furniture Ugh. are two kills in particular I will never forget. Mm-hmm. The kills are brutal and gritty in a way I didn't expect. Yeah. I expected more of the polished, stylized kills of Suspiria. Unfortunately, this movie suffers from some narrative slumps and pointless C plots between those kills. I respect the movie for how gory it chooses to be, especially during the time it was created. And I always enjoy enjoy a good relentless goblin soundtrack. (laughs) I think it's a mostly well-made movie, but the narrative speed bumps were just a little too much for me. If you like this movie, that's cool. But unfortunately, it doesn't completely work for me, so I cannot recommend it. There you go. So I guess it won't be Freak Show approved. Wah, wah, wah. Um, oh, can somebody who's ever keeping track on the wall, can somebody go through and find all the Freak Show approved movies? Yeah. Right. Oh. Where we all yeah, form. Yeah. I would love to know what everyone <laughs> voted yes on. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. It's the a, fanatics up there. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's yeah, true. I told my friend like that, and, and they looked at me and went, what the fuck is wrong with I you? I was <laughs> recommending that movie to people at work. I know. It's That's a, what, yeah. yeah. I'm just like. a surprise. I, yeah. Surprise. Um. Yeah. So, uh, deep red. As far as Dario Argento goes, I think, um, you know, it's called, um, like one of his best movies. I mean, it is one of his best movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also called like you know the best Giallo movie that uh, has ever been made. I think because it, um, you know, kind of crystallized something for that that genre. But yeah, I think uh, as time goes by. I think I give the edge to to Tenebrae. I think Tenebrae is his better Giallo movie um, because it's a better mystery and it Mm. fucking blindsided me with like, you know, I mean, like that's like next level uh, puzzle thinking when you're you're trying to construct these things because I guess that's what you end up getting into is like, how do I make uh, a mystery yeah and you know keep you guessing and doing all this other stuff. I think this one does actually suffer. That's why we watched the shorter one. It does suffer from, uh, I guess it's the slew thing. Yeah. He spends a lot of time in that house. Then he, he does. Leaves, yeah. Then he comes back to the house. And, and a lot of the, I guess some of, it works usually in a movie of the slew thing. If you can kind of make the logical leap to, to you understand why the character's there and why mm-hmm. they're doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I've seen this multiple times, so I know what Argento is thinking, but I don't know that that's being communicated. No, there was plenty. Yeah. There was plenty of times in this movie that I was like, I don't entirely know what's going right. on until yeah. until the end, and it comes all together. I'm like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah, but there but, were moments where I was like, did I miss something? But like even then. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like so somehow because there's a body buried in the house. Right. We're now we're go going to a school and, to figure this out. And yeah. Like, yeah. Like, how do we get there? Yeah. I mean, it explains it. Right. I get it. Right. But those leaps of logic are like, it's huge. It's stretching. a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, but it's uh, it's because I think the, the story in uh, this movie and a lot of Jalo films, they, they take a backseat, especially in Argento films, a backseat to the, uh, the, the, the style, right? He should be like Dario Argento's deep red or whatever, yeah. like John Carpenter or something like that. It's yeah. a stylistic thing that you're seeing from his movies. Um, I actually just recently heard uh, somebody was talking about opera, which is a movie they made in 87 as being uh, like uh, a movie where he used all the, um, the everything that he learned about making movies and making these type of movies. And he's really proud of that one. So, I mean, that one's interesting, too. It kind of stumbles in the end. But uh, that's probably the last, you know, I'd say great Dario Argento movie, 1987. He's been making them ever since. Uh, but some of them are wretchedly awful. Yeah. And he kind of like John Carpenter or Brian De Palma, these guys who all seem to, you know, kind of have graduated from the, the Alfred Hitchcock school of, uh, oh, Dario Argento made a TV movie called, Italian TV movie, Do You Like Hitchcock? Mm. It's basically <laughs> like a scream kind of thing in a way where the killer, uh, you know, do you like Hitchcock? You have to know. Do you I read mean, Sutter Kane? He kills people according to Hitchcock ah. uh, you know, uh, set pieces or whatever. Nice. Um but yeah, all these guys who I really admire for their like 70s and 80s movies uh, are still working. But now when they make movies, it seems like it's a, a film student who liked their stuff making a copy of their stuff. Mm. Uh, although I do, um, you know, for those of you who are Argento fans, if you haven't seen one, it's really hard to find. And it's called Sleepless and it has Max von Sydow in it. And it's from, I believe, the two th like 2005 or 2003, something like that. Uh, I think that one is, is you know, he's going back to the elements that made Deep Red and Tenebrae work, you know. And you should, and Bird with the Crystal Plumage, you should go, but you should go check that one out. But good luck <laughs> finding it. I don't think it's ever been really released uh, stateside, aside from like a pan and scan DVD from Artisan Entertainment. Oh, That's Jesus. how far back you got to go. Yeah. Uh, but if you can find the widescreen one, uh, it's a pretty good movie. Um, but yeah, I think stylistically, you know, like we said, I think the, the I think uh, the slasher film does owe a debt to Dario Argento. Uh, obviously, like a lot of Italian cinema owes a, a debt to Dario Argento. Um, I just don't think that he gets the credit that he deserves. And so I like he is lauded a lot, but I was surprised at how many people were writing in saying that they hadn't heard of him or the people who didn't write in at all. Cause I'm like, well, this is a blind spot. I think, yeah. uh, you know, and it's like, but this guy is, you know, probably because it's, he's a foreign director, even though he's got, uh, you know, uh, um, American releases or what are UK releases. It's like, you really got to go back and look at some of this guy's catalog of stuff because mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, uh, for what horror became, and I mean, now Nicholas Winding Refn is, you know, I mean, lifting stuff directly from, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, uh, oh, yeah, that was the other question uh, uh, that I was going to ask you guys. Were you surprised there wasn't a bunch of uh, red and blue and green lights? I was, actually. There? When the when the movie opens and we're in the, the red theater, I'm like, okay, well, there's, you know, there's, we got our red, but... That was really it. Yeah. There really wasn't a lot of color like there usually is. Because I, I think I steered you wrong at some point with it. Like the only the only two movies where Argento uses those type that type of lighting are magical supernatural movies. Okay. It's yeah. Suspiria and in its sequel and it's Inferno. Tonal, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. everything else, the crime they're they're straight. And, yeah. and so mm -hmm. is like all the giallos outside of probably uh, Mario Bava movies. Mario Bava is actually the guy who used that colored lighting, you know, Danger Diabolic. Right. All the stuff that he did was all colored and 
very cool looking. Mm-hmm. And there's a Jalo he did. I want to bring this show at some point. But I figured, you know, I needed to show you guys like a baseline. Right. Yeah. Like this is what you're expecting, kind of. And now yes. we can mm-hmm. go and now we can go up and down from there. Yeah. There you go. So I would recommend you check out Deep Red. And thank you for bearing with us for I don't know probably running along. So <laughs> next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Here it comes because it's on Shutter now, right? And everybody can watch it. You think you know me? Well. Otherwise, I'm going to go watch it. You will not. Uh, next week, we uh, I'm calling an audible, Colin. So you're going to have to wait one ah. more month. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're going back to the 90s. Yep. Zipping, zipping back in time. Yep. All right. I'm okay with this choice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I figured. I think a lot of our listeners will be okay with this choice as well. Oh, yeah. This is, now you, this is something that they've all seen. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. So it's next week. Tales from the Crypt Demon Night on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>